approximately at 220 in this morning on the 5800 block of Talman here. Heading off to the officer that was in his personal vehicle that was approached by uh, two armed defenders. Uh, one of the offenders approached the officer with a handgun pointed at him, announced the robbery. The officer initially complied with the uh, robber's demands, handed over his property. At this time, the second offender reached into the vehicle and began uh, patting down the officer going through his pockets. Uh, upon finding a second wallet that the officer had his police star in, um, they see the police star of the offender with the weapon, points the weapon at our officer and tells him not to move. The officer, knowing that he's armed, is forced to pull out his weapon and he fires at the individual with the arm with the gun, striking that individual. Uh, the other offender subsequently flees the scene uh, with the officer's property. Not having a phone on him now, the officer begins to shout, asking for help. A neighbor comes out and responds, tells him that he uh, needs an ambulance. An ambulance comes along with the police. Our offender is taken to a local hospital where he's treated for his wounds, but he succumbs to his uh, injuries and he's deceased at this time. The second offender was placed into custody a short time later. He was positively identified and he's being processed at this time. What we have right now then is we have one in custody and we have one that has succumbed to his wounds. He's a juvenile, so I don't have much information to give you other than he is a juvenile. The individual was reported missing earlier today where his father stated that he's been uh, missing and he believes that he took his weapon. The weapon that was described at that time is consistent with the weapon that we did recover uh, on the scene. Um, Deputy Chief, can you just walk us through where this happened? Was it in the street? Was the officer coming home from a personal event or coming home from work? Give us a rundown. What I'm able to tell you now is the officer was with two friends, I'll say it that way. Um, he just came home from uh, the movie theater, an event. Uh, the two individuals that were with him left. He was in the car um, doing some personal issues with his head down when he was approached by the offenders. This happens right around in the 5800 block of Talman here. So okay. the offender that's deceased is the juvenile and the one in custody is an adult? Both uh, subjects were juveniles. The one that's deceased had the weapon. The weapon is recovered. And COPA is in charge of the investigation, and right now they will be the ones that are conducting the investigation in cooperation with our detectives. Did you have reports of a vehicle or two SUVs fleeing the scene? There was no vehicles that are leaving the scene. Basically what happened is our officer was sitting in his vehicle for some time doing some personal issues uh, or some personal business when he was approached by these two individuals on foot. There was no other vehicle that Does was the used. the officer live here on the street? Was he on his way home or in the neighborhood? We're not going to get into uh, uh, where somebody lives. All I want to tell you is that he parked his vehicle on the street there. Uh, he, they, were in a, uh, they were exchanging parking spots initially. He parked his vehicle and was doing some business at that location. Can you explain why it would be said that all officers on scene would turn off their body cameras? So part of the policy that's been uh, worked out with not only the state's attorney but COPA and, and uh, in compliance with the law, once the investigation, uh, uh, once the incident is over, and the administrative part of the uh, process begins, the body cameras are to be turned off. That's consistent on every police shooting. And it's part of policy that's been, again, with COPA and uh, the state's attorney. And it's, a, and it's a process that we do for every shooting. 